banks. They have cut their forecast for US growth this year and next to reflect the checkout that is there in financial markets, this is amid Federal Reserve's tightening of monetary policy in the largest economy in the world. Now, in a report released yesterday, economists well, they said they now expect the economy in US to grow 2.4% this year and 1.6% next year. Meanwhile, former Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein, he said he believes the economy in US is at risk of possibly going into a recession as the US Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates to tackle rising inflation. Now, last week, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, he acknowledged that increasing interest rates will include some pain, but added that a far worse outcome would be for prices to continue spiking. Now, in March, Fed approved a quarter percentage point rate hike, but some analysts, they say, the fair policymakers have fallen too far behind to curb price increases without sort of sharp rate hikes that might cause recession. Now, our public health authorities in the United States have responded with praise. Oh, we can learn something from the Chinese. So watching that, you begin to ask yourself, what could stop something like that from happening here if the people in our country are for it? Well, Lily Tang has been asking that question. She was born in China. She came to the United States, to New Hampshire. She's now running for Congress. Here's her campaign ad. I was born in China to illiterate working class parents, suffered under Mao's cultural revolution and the communist dictatorship. I wanted freedom. America was my promised land. People are losing their rights to make a living and to make their own life choices. Are you worried yet? I am. I fear that the country I love is becoming like the country I left. Lily Tang Williams is a Republican candidate for Congress in the state of New Hampshire, and we are honored to have us join us, her join us now. Lily Tang Williams, thanks so much for coming on. So that's a, that's a wonderful ad that you cut. It sounds like your childhood in a repressive country really informs how you view America right now. What did it teach you? Well, I come to America for freedom and prosperity, live my American dream. I'm just worried that the, this American dream will not be there for my children who were born in this country. I have been here for 34 years. I have seen now the country is probably the worst situation today than never been. And I see this rise of authoritarianism and tyranny in our country and the canceling people's rights and, and uh, you know, um, silence dissent voices. And then what we're doing to our school children kind of remind me of what I see in China. You know, I don't want another cultural revolution happening um, in my new country. No, that's right. And uh, you fled the Chinese government. Now you see our leaders making excuses for the Chinese government, praising the Chinese government. Does that make you uncomfortable? Not just uh, uncomfortable, I'm terrified. And I have seen that uh, the government uh, are taking almost like a tactics and even terms from their playbooks. And uh, our um, country is so divided by the traditional Mao's tactic, identity politics, and separate people into oppressor versus oppress. Yes. And so he used that technique to do his cultural revolution. I'm doing warning people. We don't want that cultural revolution happening here to destroy this new country I love. Ah, are voters in New Hampshire responding to that message? Yes, we have lots of uh, people here. That's why I come here, because I love their model, live free or die. And uh, we also have uh, lots of uh, people like me who love freedom and appreciate liberty coming here through the Free State Project. So I want people to know what I'm doing here so more people like me will come here. Yes. Good morning to you. So why do you expect this to happen? Good morning, Pete. Oh, well, because um, you know, all the analysts in America, pundits, uh, are uh, picking a, um, a landslide at the midterm elections in November. Mm -hmm. They see the Republicans taking both the House and the Senate, which will give them uh, oversight investigation and subpoenas, uh, subpoena ability. And, uh, and of course, um, uh, President Biden knows they're coming for him. They're going after him, the kid. They're going to go after his performance. Out, in, well, they're, they're going to go after uh, incompetence, particularly. They're going to start with uh, the departure from Kabul and Afghanistan, and they're going to go to the southern border, and they're going to look at his breaches or things that he said he, 
he, he did during the pandemic, including uh, extending the, uh, the moratorium on, uh, on evictions and that kind of thing. And uh, so, and, and they're going to go after um, his, his kid, of course, who's probably got all kinds of things that he wants to keep away from people. And they're going to make it very clear that uh, it's payback time. Uh, the only thing, Pete, uh, that might save uh, the president is uh, the fact that uh, they, they like uh, Kamala Harris less than, yeah. than he does. So, you know, that, that's his only protection. But there's no, no doubt about it that uh, Pete Cheney and president has now uh, become the new buzzword in America. And I think uh, Biden knows it's coming. He hired a very expensive fellow. He's going to be called special counsel. And his only job is to keep... Uh, President Biden out of jail. Yeah, I mean, like you said there, uh, now a buzzword. It used to be rare as hen's teeth, but I guess Donald Trump's impeachment um, has 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 changed the game here, and now it'll it'll just be a, a regular thing. Yes, it will. As soon as you get about two thousand, uh, I'm sorry, uh, two hundred and eighteen votes in the House of Representatives, you can uh, uh, order uh, uh, impeachment yeah. on anybody, regardless that you of want. whether they're successful or not. Right. And, and Pete, they might even go back after Hillary Clinton, since you could do these things after they've left office now. So there's all kinds of things. I think the other thing, too, is that's going to make uh, uh, th this very attractive to the Republicans. By, by November, I believe that um, the um, Ukraine war will have lost its novelty. People will stop going over there, et cetera. We're going to be into an artillery uh, stalemate over there. And I think uh, Americans are going to want to hold someone accountable for uh, inflation and of course now with the baby formula and all the rest of it i think they're going to come very close to home senator Rand from kentucky who's uh, usually the lone ranger in this kind of thing says you know you can't bankroll um, uh ukraine and keep it safe while you doom the american economy to bankruptcy you know when you start giving 40 billion dollars in aid military aid to somebody you're empty you're emptying, you're emptying uh, uh, America's coffers and, and its ability to fight for itself. So I think there'll be some kind of adjustment there. But there's no doubt about it. Um, President Biden knows.